breaking news because this is Isra Hersey. I'm an organizer with CU Apartheid Columbia Apartheid Divestment uh, Columbia uh, Student Justice for Palestine. In my three years at Barnard College, I've never been reprimanded or received any disciplinary warnings. I received notice that I am one of three students suspended for standing in solidarity with Palestinians facing a genocide. Isra Hersey is Ilhan Omar's daughter. Yep. Uh, Ilhan Omar, of course, just yesterday uh, asking this um, uh, of uh, Columbia uh, administrators here. And maybe we don't play this whole thing, but, you know, I think it's a pretty dark uh, sequence of events to have Ilhan saying this and then her daughter canceled for supporting Palestine. Or suspended. Suspended, yeah. I wanted to get a clarification earlier. One of my colleagues asked you, have you seen anti-Muslim protests on campus? I have seen, we have, we have had pro-Israeli demonstrations on campus. No, 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 but, but, but just not, a protest that was not, against Muslims. No, I have not. Have you seen one against Arabs? No, I have not. Have you seen one against uh, Palestinians? No, I have not. Have you seen against one against Jewish people? Have you seen a protest no. saying we are against Jewish people? No, I have. I have. Seen, OK, thank you. No, thank I, you for that I, clarification. There has been a rise in targeting and harassment against anti-war protesters because it's been pro-war and anti-war protesters is what it seems like. Correct. Correct. There has okay. been. Thank you. Um, activists on campus, including Jewish students, black and brown, Arab and Muslim students. How many of the organizations that were canceled in Colombia involved Jewish students? One of the organizations is called Jewish Voices for Peace. Yes, and encompassed of Jewish students? Yes. Okay, thank you. There was a, uh, re there's, there's been a recent attack um, on the democratic rights uh, of students across the country. So uh, this could be just a rank retaliation. I mean, because Ilhan Omar has been an out. First of all, I mean, when her her daughter was admitted to Barnard, which is the women's college at Columbia. I mean, Ilhan Omar's correct stance about Israel and her criticism of APAC had been public knowledge, right? So they they Columbia admitted her daughter, um, but now basically because her daughter is involved in activism, I guess. And Ilhan Omar is using her, uh, her the, the, uh, power in government to speak out about this. In the midst of a McCarthy witch hunt against basically yeah. these students. They're, they're, they're penalizing her daughter. I mean, that is, that, that is low. <laughs> I, I think it's important to highlight what Matt said earlier in that you new know, neoliberal institutions will always seek to punish and exclude or you know minimize the voices of marginalized people who do not speak you know basically in favor of neoliberal agenda and that's why when people talk about college campuses being like liberal and woke it's always important to push back against that because what we know is in spaces like this you know it, marginalized identity is just a way for these institutions or people who seek to navigate them to you know negotiate social capital in a new world where like there just happen to be more wealthy more money in the hands of marginalized communities and putting a black face on you know neoliberalism on you know capitalism putting a woman at the head of your like you know company is a good way to have some kind of street cred mm -hmm. for you know diversity uh, this is not the same critique that republicans have of like diversity and equity and inclusion which is that it's just bad it's just a point that there are only specific types of diversity that you know centers of power are actually looking for and it's diversity of appearance and not diversity of viewpoint you know it's diversity of appearance but not the diversity of experience that would theoretically go with that you know with that appearance you know they want to find the ideal black person who comes from an upper middle class background who is going to speak in favor of capitalism as a vehicle for escaping you know modern uh maldistribution of resources but if you happen to be black and from a background that is the same as predominant background of black people, you will find that they, you know, close their ears to you. And it just, it just is reality of it. Uh, this is one of the um, 
protesters on campus speaking about her experience to democracy now um one of the uh Ilhan Omar's daughters, I guess, classmates that she, I imagine, was organizing with. Palestine, um, and we are here today to demand that Colombia divest immediately from all states in Israeli apartheid. Um, over 33,000 Palestinians have been killed, and as we speak, um, our president is testifying uh, in front of the House in a game of political theater that is conflating anti-Zionism with anti-Semitism. We want to focus the attention on what's going on in Gaza and and re, re tell Colombia that we are not going anywhere, no matter how much government suppression we face. We will keep fighting until they divest. They have been completely repressive. I mean, we faced police brutality. We have faced countless policy changes. I mean, my group, as along with uh, Jewish Voice for Peace, was suspended in the fall semester completely illegitimately. Um, and uh, I, I filed a lawsuit um, to counter that action. Um, and, and it seems like the repression is only getting worse and worse and worse. Um, but the more they repress us, the more we rise up. And that's why we've escalated. Uh, that's also why we've escalated here today. Not only are they not listening to us when we we peacefully protest when we attempt to um, just pass referendums for student voices to even be heard. They don't even want to listen to the students. They don't want to know what the students think. Um, and so we're here to tell them that we will take up space and presence on this campus and they're not going to be able to erase our support for Palestine. Since October, the very... Yeah, I mean, and, and she's incredibly clear there. The fact that Ilhan Omar specifically calls out that one of the groups that is being targeted is a Jewish organization. In the context of these House hearings, of course, Stefanik is at the at the very forefront of this once again, conflating Zionism um, or, or anti-Zionism with anti-Semitism. And she explicitly points out that these are Jewish groups that are being targeted, says everything that you need to know about what we're seeing. Right Reportedly, now. one of the three students uh, banned this morning was... Um was Jewish also. Uh, there's a good thread here from uh, uh, Assad uh, from NYC. Historically, Columbia has been better at welcoming non-WASP minorities than Harvard, Yale, Princeton, giving more space to, to Jews to challenge WASP hegemony in the mid-20th century. Today, newer minorities are challenging current hegemonies, and the tension we are seeing uh, is history unfolding. All the Ivies have been entry points. I mean, I would just recommend this. Maybe I, I don't want to read the whole thing, but it, it goes into, you know, Columbia is where Edward Said was. Well, um, and is where, and, uh, uh, I'm sorry, the Hundred Years' War on Palestine. Rashid Khalidi, Rashid Khalidi is yep. right now. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, I mean Adam Tooze. I, I mean, there's there's a lot of people associated with Columbia, maybe even more than the other Ivies that get it. Um, and but uh, also like they are protecting people like Shay Davidai, this crazy business school uh, charlatan who keeps um, putting targets on students' back um, and doing this conflation of anti-Zionism equals anti-Semitism stuff. That you know, I mean, and and also. We should just say, like, the safety of the students here. On Columbia, there was a chemical sort of attack yes. by somebody reportedly uh, a student that formerly served in the IDF. And uh, my most recent uh, uh, information on that, and I believe this was reported, is that student said it was just like a fart spray type of thing. It was a stink bomb. That is still absolutely appalling that you would be doing that to a protests like this and like that should have way severe con uh, consequences than what uh, Ilhan Omar's daughter is facing right now. I mean, there, I mean that there should are... have consequences on the campus with the school at the very least, if not, if, if not right. legal consequences with like the law. That seems like that's a good uh, reason for suspension. Um, if you were to uh, do something like that to uh, other students, I mean, it's 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 very clear too. like, especially with like the, that that uh, USC valedictorian who was removed from uh, giving a speech at graduation that, you know, she minored in a literal course and a little uh, subject matter there, I should say. There's they have a minor in resistance to genocide, their yes. terminology, not not something that the students came up with the school's terminology. Like it's super clear that they they they're fine. And uh, with with this happening when it's in the past and it's safe to talk about, uh, you know, this this um, this moment in time will be talked about in, I don't know, 10, 20 years in that course. And they will look back on what we did at the school and how we'll never be like that again until, of course, it happens again. And it directly affects people who are currently in charge. And then, of course, the cycle will continue when it's safe to look back. They'll put it uh, in context to what it exactly was. It's it's ludicrous. The whole thing is ridiculous to watch play out.
You make a great point because it's also the hurdles that we deal with in trying to accurately ascribe the genocide label to what Israel is currently committing. Um, the Why I think democratizing the term and calling it a genocide without blinking is important is because of that very impulse to be able to look at things clearly when there are no stakes, when you can look back in history and identify things as genocides. But the reason that we are attempting to identify genocide is to prevent it from happening in the future. And you still see how in the present, as young people who have been correct throughout history in their opposition to war and bloodshed and have been proven right time and time again, these mechanisms of oppression specifically around black and brown voices too, right? And that's how they're weaponizing this anti-Semitic label to conflate Zionism, um, anti-Zionism with anti-Semitism. Um, you, you essentially see just how that, how genocides are allowed to unfold um, because of the this massive uh, suppression of these voices. Um, and it, it, it is depressing because the, these protesters are, protesters are correct um, and and yet everything is being thrown at them basically to, yeah. to, to intimidate them and it's a I hesitate to call it McCarthyite because that's such a oh, yeah, so totally strong is. label right no. but that's exactly what we're seeing no McCarthyism like that exists like we've had multiple red scares uh, in this country whether it was uh, sort of against uh, being too into Native Americans earlier on or even like the 1870s it was already you're too much of a uh, socialist uh, mm -hmm. and sort of thing like that but uh, but this flares up all the time um, I would just say like right now it looks like students are being kettled on campus at Columbia so um, this is a very much Cops developing have showed story. up yep yeah, and this is also just overall I think uh, attempt to break up people's ability Due to build collective power, because we've been seeing, you know, attacks on protests, not just with the pal the most recent uh, attacks on protesting uh, that has come out in the past few weeks. But we've been seeing attacks on protesting, both formal in the form of like laws being passed that make it OK or attempt to make it OK to run over protesters who block the road uh, to informal attacks on protests from, you know, maybe more center right, center left, center people generally that like protest is just ineffective because it makes people like again your cause and all these other, you know, completely ahistorical takes about what the purpose in a uh, result of protesting and other direct action, uh, because the goal, I think, is to make people feel alone, make people feel weak and make people feel as yep. though these sorts of collective movements are both dangerous and ineffective. Dangerous because people will be hurt because we will empower citizens and the police to hurt you and ineffective because it will cause a rapidly, you know, at least a certain portion of the population who is defined by their own comfort to turn a blind eye because this it's inconveniencing them. And so, you know, in some ways it's McCarthy, -ite, but I also feel as though, uh, you know, communism uh, in America has just been one of many labels and tools used by the entrenched power, you know, structure to sort of paint swaths of people who are trying to engage in collective action, you know, maybe for communism, or maybe just for like, you know, your run of the mill redistribution of wealth into a, like another, like into our social safety network. I mean, social safety net that has been rapidly deteriorating when, you know, it, it it's barely communism. It, it's just an overall, I think, attack on uh, populist left or uh, any kind of redistributive left or any type of ability to, you know, form collective action that is not, you know, coming from the far right or center right. And, uh, you know, those they will always count out to. They will always yep. listen to like a handful of like far Barry right Weiss. people crying, yeah, but, crying I mean, about it. But, but that's the whole uh, the Barry Weiss came out of Columbia University. Literally attacking, teachers. attacking pro Palestine. Attacking Palestinians. Uh, I mean, attacking Palestinian uh, uh, thought leaders, or, or and that's not the right word for it, but basically attacking the accurate history of uh, the Zionist project. Um, and then now her entire branding is about free speech on campus and how all of these college students are so authoritarian and they shout down conservative voices. What it, where are these free speech warriors right now as the entire administrative apparatus for Columbia and other universities around the country are united in suppressing pro-Palestinian speech? It really is a great exercise in understanding how so much of conservative 
uh, thought about this is projection. It's absolute projection because they are in the process of one of the biggest, uh, you know, suppressive movements on free speech on campuses that we will ever see in our lifetime. Katie Smith at probably read it on Twitter. Current situation. This is a uh Two minutes ago, current situation at the student encampment on Columbia University right now, press and legal observers ordered to leave the lawn by NYPD. Police are now mass arresting students. Legal observers are being arrested. Top NYPD officials, including Deputy Commissioner and Op of Operations Kaz Dartry and Chief of Patrol John Seller on the scene. Five corrections department buses are parked outside campus. Yep. Apparently, the, there has been an email sent out about the NYPD being deployed by the university on these students. I mean, this is a developing massive story right now. Yep. yep. Neoliberal institutions, you know, once they've become unable to break up collective action, you know, despite their pledge to whatever free speech, their pledge to education, their pledge to diversity of thought, you know, they won't hesitate to call in uh, the police. They won't hesitate to break up that because it, you know, you know, represents an affront to the status quo. And, and as far as conservative free speech warriors go, like if you really want to conservative free speech warriors to defend your valedictorian speech, you know, that USC uh, graduate, uh, she should have put like the N word in it. Yeah. That, that they, yeah. <laughs> she should have just like, she should have said a few slurs <laughs> and then they would have been defending her left, right and center. It, the, the, it might have the, muddled the message, but still. Yeah. I mean, this constellation of free speech people, I mean, it, it's where this needs to be the concluding segment. Like Michael Schellenberger is helping to try to coo Lula over the same sort of Twitter files bullshit um, uh, right now. Like all those people, they are um, liars. They are plants. Um, and like Barry Weiss, that's just what she is. And so like the it's over for that. Like the 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 free speech is it both a very important thing and we are lucky for the first amendment and it is also like the tesla uh truck for fascists right now mm -hmm. it's the vehicle well, they pile in to uh, get anything done yep in, in some of their defense but it's, some of not them even, not. it's not it's not even though because they they're they don't even they don't they don't use it in the correct like it's just like they're like the the it's the sheet they hide themselves underneath uh but uh it's it's <laughs> not actually hood. Yeah, it's not actually the First Amendment that they're ever talking about because there is not. not any sort of governmental crackdowns on right wing thought leaders, on right wing speech. There's no sort of institutions going after right wingers. I mean, people have made the point. I've seen it over and over again that these same campuses cracking down on Palestinian speakers like that valedictorian Palestinian uh, uh protests like we're seeing in Colombia right now. These are the same type of schools that welcomed right wing fascists with open arms to come speak at the school and to have their thoughts be shared to the marketplace of ideas like they do not like the right wing never gets treated the same way in terms of actual stifling of speech in a way that that actually matters whatsoever. No, absolutely. And I mean, some of them aren't outright lying. Some of them, I think, to Matt, you know, Matt's point are just deeply insecure. The, the free speech proponents online, at least, are just deeply insecure that you might stop talking to them yeah. or that you might have freedom to associate with them. And, you know, it's no it is no coincidence that people who have leveraged other platforms or other people's platforms, the company's platforms as their main way of like or having income on you know online and also make money on those platforms by harassing other people feel very strongly about your inability or people's inability to stop freely uh, associating with them which is always funny because they put themselves like libertarians or classical liberals when they're the crux of their philosophy around free speech is that you don't have the right or you don't have the voluntary right to disassociate from me or stop listening to me or advocate that people stop listening to me because you know that would be violating my freedom of speech right um we have uh sorry uh brandon but we're just oh, no. like this, this story is really big um they're they're arresting students on campus yeah. and i just want to put this link out there for folks uh brandon o'connor uh, nypd is sweeping columbia's campus financial support for arrested evicted students can be shared via venmo at bc, BC abolition yeah. collective okay. bc abolition collective appreciate that 
Um, no, this is only going to serve to, uh, I mean, obviously what's happening is uh, uh, horrible, but it, it certainly is going to backfire on Columbia. It's only going to serve to uh, get uh, what's going on there, more coverage in the news. You know, I, I would wager to guess that most people uh, who are not in this political bubble we are had no idea there were even students, um, you know, camped out at Columbia uh, and protesting for for this. And yep. now it certainly will be in every uh, uh local news coverage uh, and beyond imaginable yep it's gonna it's gonna be funny when columbia sends those like you know somebody don't expel everyone who they get arrested but when columbia sends those like fundraising emails to these kids like in five years from now like hey <laughs> like remember when you went to columbia uh how about kicking us five dollars we're doubling and matching this month and it's like uh. yeah. 